Hey, what's up everyone? Jonathan Allen here at Floodwater Studios. If you are new to the channel, thanks for hanging out. Welcome, welcome. If you've been here for a couple of videos, appreciate you even more. You know, we have a free gift for you either way. If you're brand new, if you've been here for a while, head to floodwaterstudios.com slash home studio. Grab our free home studio equipment guide. We want to help you utilize the space that you have to create the music that you want. So this free guide has personal recommendations for all sorts of equipment from just starting out or expanding what you currently have, floodwaterstudios.com slash home studio. Today, I want to talk about my normal vocal chain. So let's go ahead and hop into studio one here. I have a session pulled up from my song Coffee. Now, what I'm going to show you is really my rule for vocal chains in no matter what song I'm working on, because there's three simple things that I always start with to get basically where I want to be sitting for the vocal mix. So you can see here, I'm not showing the plugins yet. So let's go ahead. We're going to open that up. And what we can see, first of all, you'll see a bunch of things on here that say none. I had a bunch of different uh, monitor mixes set up for these. So I mean, we actually don't need any of those in there. So let's go ahead and just get rid of those because I don't have those monitor mixes anymore. So as you can see, there's three plugins on my vocal here. I have an EQ. I have the fat channel, which I'm using as compression and slight EQ adjustments as well. And I have a compressor. Now let's talk about ordering. So the order of operation is what I like to say here. So for the order of operation, when it comes to vocals specifically, we need to listen to two different things. One, does it sound good? So if you've recorded in your space, your space has good acoustic treatment. It's not dead because we don't want a completely dead sound, but not a lot of room noise. Is there anything that's kind of jumping out in the uh, frequencies? Anything that kind of needs to be tamed? Or does it sound pretty good already? It sounds pleasing and, and what you're, you're envisioning for the vocal itself. So if it's your vocal, most of the time you already know what kind of frequencies are, are sticking out in your voice. Um, or if you're recording somebody else, if you've noticed, okay, well, the highs are a little brittle, may need to do something with that. There's a lot of low mids in the voice. We need to tame those. Um, that's where we want to kind of look at. So in this vocal, I'm going to turn everything off on it and I'm going to grab my headphones and let's take a listen to this vocal in itself. I was driving when all the signs said road closed ahead. I was staring at myself and thinking just of the end. So from what I'm hearing just off of the initial recording here, everything's dry. Not a lot of room noise. I have treated my room. I, I took, I, I took a lot of effort to take this decent sized room with hardwood floors and slanted ceilings and tried to tame what I could. Now I'm no professional at that aspect of it. Um, but I did my best and I think I did pretty good. Um, but it's pretty muddy to me. So there's definitely some things that need to be worked on EQ wise. So I brought an EQ in. So this is the EQ that I used for this specific session. Um, obviously, putting on a low cut, I want to get rid of most of the low end in the vocal because we've got kick and bass that are taking care of that. I don't need all that extra information in there. And then it was just a little muddy. So I came in here and I cut the mids and a little bit of the the higher mids here. Now, originally I did have another high boost in here, but I'll show you how I kind of worked that in a different way. 
So just with the EQ applied here, this is what we have. I was driving when all the signs said road closed ahead. I was staring at myself and thinking just of the end. But I made the choice to hold. So you can hear just those little, little cuts up here in the mids and the upper mids, just giving it that little bit of extra clarity where sometimes going through like here, if I were to add this high boost, say I would have added the high boost, but I didn't address the actual mids themselves. So let's listen to that. I was driving when all the signs said road closed ahead. I was staring at my. So at face value, it sounds like I've gotten where I want to be. But I haven't addressed the buildup that's happening in the mids here and the upper mids. So one thing that I always recommend is when you are looking at your EQ, when you're listening and applying EQ, I always suggest subtractive EQ first. Subtractive meaning cutting some frequencies to enhance what's already there. A lot of times with boosting EQs, we're trying to alter something. With cutting, we're trying to enhance the actual product. So cutting out those mids, it already sounds a little crispier. The mud is cleaned up a little bit. And then we hop over to our fat channel now because we've gotten to a place where I've cleared up the issue that I found with the mud itself. So we come into the fat channel and here, this is where I start my compression. So the compressor, uh, we all know what compressors do. Hopefully you do. Um, if you don't, essentially we are squashing the signal, but we're bringing the higher transients. So the louder transients, we're bringing those down to a certain threshold. And that way we can take the lower transients and move everything up in volume. So that way we can get a more uniform sound. Um, just giving you one, it's going to give us some less dynamics depending on how much you're, you're squashing and how much you're just hammering your vocals. But it's going to give you the opportunity to adjust the quieter parts and the louder parts and get them to be roughly the same dynamic, roughly the same volume for things. And as opposed to if you, you weren't squashing and then raising, the louder parts are just going to be a lot louder. And then the quieter parts are going to be around normal. But then you start to get into clipping things. It's you, just a mess. Let, work with compression. So with the compressor here, what we're going to do is I'm going to turn off the equalizer that I also have on. So the EQ there, and we're just going to listen to the original EQ now with the compressor. So we have adjusted the mud and now we're working with the compression aspect. I was driving when all the signs said road closed ahead. I was staring at myself and thinking just of the end. But I made the choice to oh to move on again. And actually, if you don't know what I was talking about with squashing the louder sections, this is a prime example. So... If we turn off this EQ, you can even just see from the waveforms, this is a lot louder and more intense than this, this little section here with a couple words. So no compression. Oh, to move on again. Oh, to move on. But when we turn that compressor on, now we can hear on again. You'll hear that oh, it'll come down. It'll, it'll squash that to make it more uniform. Oh, to move on again. And if you're having a hard time hearing that, if you're on like your phone speakers, 
you know, grab some headphones. You can see over here in the meter as well. We never want to mix with our eyes. We do want to mix with our ears, but this will show you how much compression is happening. Oh, to move on again. So you can see it's gotten to like 7 dB of compression just on again. So this is the vocal now with EQ and then compression added. So one more. I was driving when all the signs said road closed ahead. So now what I did was I went back to another equalizer through this vintage EQ on, and this is where I start fine tuning everything afterwards. So I addressed the problem of the mud. Then I compressed the vocal to get up to level where I needed to be. And now I'm going to go in and fine tune things. So here still took out some low ends, still took out some low mids, boosted the upper mids just a little bit. And then the high frequencies still kind of left them alone. I didn't do anything with the higher frequencies like I was originally planning in the original EQ. So when we look at this, let's turn it off and I'll toggle that off and on a couple times. I was driving when all the signs said road closed ahead. I was staring at myself and thinking just of the end. But I made the choice to, oh, to move on again. So there you can see we're just now kind of fine tuning what we've already gotten. Um... So bringing out a little bit of crispiness, still taming a little bit of the lows and the low mids, just so we're not overpowering uh, for everything. But this is really the color of the vocal now. So regular EQ, we've addressed the issue. Compression, we have added the dynamics or, you know, boosted the vocal itself, gotten that squashed feel that I love. Um, just, I, I love slamming vocals in. Now this isn't as drastic as some of them, but you know, and then this EQ, now we're fine tuning the, the product. Now, the third thing that I always do, no matter what vocal we're working on, is I will add a third compressor. Now this compressor, you can see that it is very oddly set up. Now, the reason it's set up like this is because it's just being used as a de-esser. And I've done a video on this in the past about different ways to do de-essers. Um, this is normally how I set it up. So I'll come in here, look at the filter aspect. I will find the frequencies of the S's and T's and, and syllabances for things. And this is where I'll start to attack by taking my ratio all the way up, my knee all the way down so it's more of a shelf. And then I'll start working with the threshold and see where I need to be. So if we listen here one more time, we have it engaged and we'll get it to where essentially the way I like to do it is bring it down. So bring the threshold down until it starts to sound like the performer has a lisp. Once that has happened, you've gone too far. Now back it off just a little bit until it starts to sound more natural. But the S's and T's and everything like that is starting to be tamed and it's not jumping out. I was driving when all the signs said road closed ahead. I was staring at myself. So you can hear it's starting to sound like I have a little bit of a lisp. We've obviously gone too far. Now we just want to back it off a little bit. I was driving when all the signs said road closed ahead. I was staring at myself and thinking just of the end. But I made the choice to. So what we're actually listening for, and you can hear everything's working. Those syllabances, they're not piercing through anymore. If we just click this listen button, this will tell you what is being compressed right here. So 
So if you were on phone speakers, you definitely most likely didn't hear that. But it's just a lot of high-end stuff that we don't need in there, especially when it comes to, like I said, all the syllabants. So we have this. I set that as the de -esser. Now when we play it with the mix... I was driving when all the signs said road closed ahead I was staring at myself and thinking just of the end But I made the choice to all oh, to move on again This time I meant it So those are my three Hard set rules that I follow when it comes to a normal vocal chain. Of course, you can start to go even deeper with things. You have reverbs that you can put on. You can start to put on delays. Um, a lot of people like to do distortion or overdrive on vocals, depending on how the tune is. Um, so there's there's endless possibilities and really it just boils down to what you have envisioned for that song or what the artist has envisioned for that song that you're working with. Um, but these are my three hard, fast rules, EQ, compression, de -esser. Those I always have on my vocal chain. But what's your normal vocal chain? Let me know down in the comments section. Again, if you're looking into getting, you know, into this studio world, into the home studio world, or you want to expand what you have, head over to floodwaterstudios.com slash home studio for your free home studio equipment guide. We will catch you guys on the next one. Hope you have a great day. Go record something. See ya.